guys back for more factoring and congratulations you have made it through your last factoring video all right this is the last one before spring break so let's get busy and try to do as many as you can by yourself all right first of all what we're going to be doing is trying to find an appropriate method for factoring a polynomial and then we're going to combine several different methods within one problem okay whoops all right just a reminder, we talked about this in class, but the sum of squares, which is when you have a square and a square added together, cannot be factored. So if you ever get to that, you need to stop. All right, here are four steps in remembering how to factor these problems. First step, always try to find a GCF. Now I've talked to you about this, but you may wanna actually write these steps down. The second thing to do is look for difference of two squares. We're going to call that a DOS or perfect square trinomial, which is a PST. Either of these are very simple and easy to do and they don't take very much time. The third step is to look for simple factoring, which has an X squared. Or you can try to factor an AX squared, which is called slip and slide. The last one says to check for common factors, which is going to be grouping. All right, let's get started with the fun stuff. Number one, I'm going to tell you what I see so that I can try to get you thinking the same direction and so you can go through the steps in your head. Looking at this problem, I first try a greatest common factor. For a greatest common factor between 10, 48, and 32, is 2. So I'm going to first take out a 2. They don't all have x's, so 2 is going to be the only number that I can take out in the front. Left over is 5x squared plus 24x plus 16. Now I would look inside and see if this could be a perfect square trinomial. However, the 5 is not a perfect square. Since it is a trinomial with the 5 in front, I'm going to slip and slide. So that gives me 2x squared plus 24x plus 80. Now I have a simple problem to factor. I'm trying to multiply to get 80. And, whoops, I didn't mean to put that there. Multiply to get 80 and add to get 24. Now it's not coming to me off the top of my head, so I'm going to make a little table. Multiply to get 80 add to get 24. All right, so that would be 2 times 40. That doesn't work. 3 doesn't go into 80. 4 times 20. There we go. 4 times 20 multiplies to give me 80 and adds to give me 24. So that's going to be plus 4 and plus 20. Now I need to slide the 5 back under and I get 2 5x plus 4 when I clear my fraction. 5 goes into 24 times, and so that would be x plus 4. And then you should try to check your answer. So I'm going to do 5 times x is 5x squared. The inside is 4x. The outside is 20x. That adds up to 24x, and 4 times 4 is 16. Now I'm supposed to end with a 32. That's because this 2 right here needs to distribute all the way through and I do end up with the same problem that I started with. Number 2. We need to factor this completely. The first thing I always try to do is greatest common factor. In fact there's not a choice. You have to do that. So between 8 and 18 the greatest common factor is a 2 x to the 6 and x squared, the most I can take out is x to the 2nd. y squared and y squared, I'm going to take out a y squared. All right, I have left over two terms inside the parentheses. Now I notice that's a difference, so I'm wondering if it's going to be a dos, which is difference of squares. 2 times 4 gives me 8. I have x to the 2nd, I need 6, so that's 4 more. I already took the y squared out front, so I don't have to deal with that any longer. 
2 times 9 is 18. I already took the x squared out. I already took the y squared out. So that would just be a 9. Now I'm going to bring down my 2x squared y squared. Guys, anytime you see perfect squares like 4, 9, 81, 25, you really should keep trying to move on. Also, if there's a fourth power, that's an even power, and you should try to keep going on with that as well. So this is the difference of squares. I'm going to make two sets of parentheses with two different signs. To take care of the 4x to the fourth, I'm going to put a 2x squared here and a 2x squared in the second one. The 9 is 3 times 3. Now since this has an x squared, I should try to keep going. I notice this is a plus sign, so that one is finished. On this one, I have a squared and a minus, but the 3 is not a perfect square, and neither is the 2. So guess what? I'm finally finished. Example 3. I need to factor completely, so what I'm going to do first is take out a greatest common factor. They both have 2's, and they both have at least one y. If I take out a 2 and a y, that leaves me x squared. If I take out a 2 and a y, that leaves me with y squared. So it's x squared take away y squared. I see that I have two terms, so this is going to be a difference of squares. Bring down your 2y. You need two sets, sorry, my phone went off. Two sets of parentheses, one is a plus and one is a minus. x squared is x times x, y squared is y times y. The end. Now, you can also check your answer by multiplying your answer all the way back out. And then you can see that you start with the same problem that you started with. Number four. If none of the factoring methods work, then the polynomial is said to be unfactorable. Now you've seen that a couple of times this week, but I've never actually said that. So, number four. This has three terms. I notice that there is not a GCF in this problem. Nine is a perfect square. Two is not a perfect square. So it's not a difference of squares, and it's not a perfect square trinomial. It has a number in front, so I think I'm going to try to slip and slide. So I'm going to take the 9 and put it over there by the 2. That gives me 18. Now I need to try to multiply to get 18, negative 18, and add to get 3. Well, let's see. That gives me um, 2 times 9. That's not a 3. 3 times 6. That is a 3. I need to make one of the signs negative, but the 3 is going to be positive. So if I put the negative on the 3, it works. So that gives me x plus 6 and x minus 3. Now I need to slide the 9 back under. I need to reduce my fractions. x plus 2 thirds and x minus 1 thirds. Now I need to clear fractions by multiplying by 3 here. That gives me 3x plus 2 because the 3's will cancel. Multiply by 3 here and I get 3x minus 1. You can multiply it all out to make sure that it works. Number 5. Again, we're going to multiply by, we're going to factor by many methods. First thing I'm going to do is guess what? You said it. GCF. These all have a 12 in common. They also all have at least one B in common. Taking out a 12B, that leaves me with B squared. 12 times 4 is 48. I need one more B. And 12 times 4 is 48. I already took that B out front. Now, this is not difference of squares because there are three terms. Um, but it could be a perfect square trinomial because the 4 is a perfect square. Let's try it and see if it works. Write down your 12b squared. 
and in my parentheses, I have a perfect square trinomial, which means that the answer is a squared. I'm going to take the B, half of the B's here. 4 is 2 times 2, and bring down your plus sign. Let's check the creamy filling and make sure it worked. B squared times 2 is 2B squared. Then I need to double... Uh-oh, I messed up here. Looky here, guys. Did you catch that, or did I just do it? This is not supposed to be a squared. No, no, no. All right, so that's B plus 2. 2 times B is 2B. Double that, I get 4B. Did it work? Yes, it did work. All right, so this is going to be my final answer, 12B squared, parentheses, B plus 2 squared. Number 6. I look for common factors. I think I do have common factors. And they have a 4 in common. Left over, I have y squared plus 3y minus 18. Now we've had that problem just a minute ago, and I remember that 6 times 3 is 18. If the 6 is positive and the 3 is negative, that does give me a 3. So this is just factoring a simple trinomial. That gives me 4y plus 6 and y minus 3. Number 7. I need to factor this polynomial. I'm going to start again with greatest common factor. I think you get that by now. x to the fourth and x squared both have an x squared in common. If I take x2 away from x to the fourth, that leaves x squared. And if I take an x squared out of x squared, that's going to leave a 1. Now look inside. This has two terms, so it's going to be the difference of squares. Gives me x squared. I need two parentheses with two different signs. I'm going to put one of the x's in the front, one of the x's in the back. 1 times 1 is negative 1. That should be your final, final answer. Okay, I've provided this chart for you just to kind of help you remember what all of the different types of factoring are. <coughs> Excuse me. On the left-hand side, are all the mathematical rules written out in letters and on the right hand side are really good examples of each of the problems. You may want to cut this out and tape it into your notebook. All right we have a group quiz tomorrow so and it's the Friday before spring break so I'm looking forward to a great day. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Night Bearcats!